Hello YouTube, this is Alexis, the transgender duelist. Uh, welcome back. I'm doing a super defense robot deck profile this time around. They're sort of a weird rank 8 spam archetype where literally one level 8 monster in the deck, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's go ahead and get into the deck profile. I'll get to these guys once we get to them. So we're running a mini Ancient Gear engine of triple Ancient Gear Gadgeton Dragon, double Ancient Gear Golem, Triple Ancient Gear Town, and Triple Ancient Gear Catapult. This is here mainly to just to do three things. One, it deck bins when you get the combo going, which is a little touch and go, but I like it just because the deck doesn't really have a lot of oomph without that particular engine, so with this engine, at the very least, it can pop off really hard, and I've actually won games just because of that particular combination alone. Secondly, they are immune to battle traps, so if you're playing against a deck that runs a lot of of a trap cards, for example, like, I don't know, uh, you send you demise or something like that, provided you can get the combo off, you have monsters that they can't really do anything to stop, so you can just, like, punch them for 6,000 damage or something like that. And then lastly, they're rank 8 monsters, they're machine-type monsters, and, I mean, rank 8, they're level 8 monsters, they're machine-type monsters, you just can use them for rank for rank eights, including their own googly eyes dragon, which is surprisingly underrated for a rank eight monster. Like it's locked to machine based decks, but it's definitely not a bad monster. It's just outdated by today's standards. Next, running triple Carcar D. I know this might seem a little bit weird, and I know someone's gonna say run Pod Desires, but I like running Carcar D for a few different reasons. One, this deck can have hands where you just don't really do anything. So running this gives me more combo pieces in my hand. I run the Swords of Revealing Light because it's a level 8 monster that combos pretty well with this deck. Just all around pretty nice card. And this deck is kind of a little bit slow, so it doesn't really hurt to have card card D. You're not bringing this to like, a, you're not bringing this against meta anyway, so giving up a turn isn't the worst thing in the world. <clears throat> We're running a small Machina engine, a Machina Cannon, and Machina Fortress, and then triple Machina Gear Frame. Basically, Machina Cannon is just here to be another level 8 monster you can pitch to get onto the field. Machina Fortress, you just run this in any machine based deck you can. And then Machina Gear Frame is just a Stratos for both of those two cards. Not really a whole lot to say there. And also, you can attach Machina Gear Frame to your uh, machine type monsters to get protected. I think it's from card effects in battle. Uh, yeah, it's just any time it would be destroyed. So it's also got that little bit of utility. Next, we're running triple Super Defense Robot Elephant, triple Super Defense Robot Leo, and triple Super Defense Robot Monkey. I'm putting all three of these together because they kind of all work sort of similarly. Super Defense Robot Elephant, if you normal summon this card, you can special summon a Super Defense from your hand. I don't know why it has to be normal summon for that effect. It should be any type of summon because... <clears throat> but it's already a level 8 monster, so, like, that's already a lot of resources to invest in normal summon this thing, which you're never going to do in the first place. And also, it can't be used for an excuse summon except for a level 8 monster, so also keep that in mind. Uh, Leo, normal summon, special summon some super defense robot out of your hand, and then if an exactly one is added from your graveyard to your hand, you can special summon it from your hand. I don't really use the second effect very often, but it does occasionally come up, so it's nice to keep that in mind. And then Monkey is normal summon, special summon out of your hand. You can banish one from your graveyard to add one from your graveyard to your hand, which is how you would actually use Leo's effect, but it doesn't really come up that often, but you, it does sometimes, so do keep that in mind. Basically, the idea is you have to get Elephant onto the field as quickly as you can, and... Uh, yeah, not really a lot to say. I hate that they had to summon out from the hand, though, because they could summon out from the graveyard. At the very least, your normal summon would have some more value, but as of right now, your normal summon's really only going to be to use if you have an elephant in your hand. Any other time, your normal summon's probably going to be on gear frame or a car card D. It's, it's kind of sad, to be honest. Next, we're running Triple Swords and the Revealing Light. It's a defensive card, it's level 8, and uh, not really a whole lot to say there. It also makes it so the monster you summon can't be destroyed by battle once per turn, which is... I mean, it's nice, but most of your monsters you're summoning are pretty big, so that's probably not happening in the first place. Running the one copy of Monster Reborn, because it's Monster Reborn. We're running 
I guess I'll quickly go over Gear Town and uh, Catapult. Gear Town, when it's destroyed, you special summon the Ancient Gears out of your deck, and Ancient Gear Catapult just destroys your Gear Town and special summoning gear, an Ancient Gear from your deck, ignoring summoning conditions, which is important because of Ancient Gear Golem. And you can also banish it from the graveyard to pop a card on the field to summon out a token, which it's it's okay. It's not like super relevant, but it does come up. Running one copy of Scapegoat. I was running two. Dropped it for a copy of uh, of, of Swordsman just because I wasn't really using it that often. One Soul Charge because you can actually make some pretty nice monsters. So it's not bad to have Soul Charge. Giving up the battle phase isn't that big of a deal. Triple Terraforming because I want to see Gear, Gear Town as often as I can. And then the Triple Trade-In because we're running a lot of A-Level 8 monsters. So... Now uh, this gives me a little bit extra consistency, not really a lot to say there. Now for the Exceeds Monsters, we're running one copy of the Sea Castle. This is just here to sort of remove a few options from your opponent's extra deck. And you can also act as a quick play Regeki if your opponent's playing like a lot of Link Spams or a lot of Fusions or whatever. You can just Sea Castle, blow up everything they have and not really a whole lot to say there. One copy of Coach King. Don't really summon him very often, but when you do summon him, he can usually burn your opponent for around 1600 damage. You draw free cards, and not really a whole, a whole lot to say there. Uh, you may want to add a Deco Talker, though, if you find yourself going into him pretty often. One Divine Dragon, just here because he's a decent level uh, rank 8 monster. Running double Chipper Blade Dragon, just because we're running the Galaxy Eye engine, so. Uh, this gives us options to destroy our opponent's monsters pretty easily. Not really a whole lot to say there. When it's destroyed, you can special summon out Chipper, which you can then rank back up into another Blade Dragon. Which is why we're running two of it and only one of the Chipper Blade uh, Chipper Dragon. Uh, Chipper just uh, steals a monster your opponent controls. If it happens to be an Exceeds monster, you can just summon out another Blade if you have extra monster zones open. So do keep that in mind. And then one arm, uh, full armored because it can destroy a card by detaching. So if you summon out Chipper, you're usually getting rid of at least three, three cards your opponent controls. So that's really nice. When running Googly Eyes Drum Dragon, he's a little bit outdated nowadays, but he does become a 4k beater. And if it does actually get destroyed, you can special summon it during the next turn by... Uh, let me quickly read it. Yeah, you can special summon it during the next turn by banishing a super heavy at a super defense out of your graveyard, and then you can attach a super defense in your graveyard to it as an exceeds material. And as long as that's an exceeds material, you can just continuously special summon it. So it can be a pretty hard monster for certain decks to get rid of. Like I've won a few games off of that just because it just continuously recurs itself. One number fifteen, it can destroy any special summon monster your opponent controls. It won't usually deal burn damage anymore, but it's still a really nice spot removal, so I still like to run it. One, number 38. Not really going to explain much about this one. Just spell negation is always going to be good. And then one, number 68, which is just here to stop your opponent from special summoning out of the graveyard. It's not really that good, but if you're running, if you're playing against, like, say, Light Swarms or Infernoids or even Goki to an extent, this card can definitely put in work. So it's definitely not an option that you should scope away at. If you're not running him, I'd recommend you run like a decode or an underclock taker or something like that. Running one Borlo just because you can make it occasionally. And then we're running the triple Mrs. Radiant here just because, well, your entire deck is Earth. So running triple Mrs. Radiant just seems like the most natural choice. You can, like, you can link into Mrs. Radiant, activate Soul Charge, and then Xyz summon into like two different Xyz monsters. Like, say, uh, you can summon out, say, the Sea Castle and a number 38 or something like that, and then your opponent's going to have a little bit of trouble killing your field, so it's it's okay. It's not like the best not like the best deck out there, but I think this deck is okay for what it does. I mean, it came out in, in the Zexal era, so it's definitely got some synergy, but I just don't like how the deck has to summon from the hand to get their combos going. But let me know what you guys think, and what other decks you would like me to deck profiles. This is Alexis, and I'm signing out.